First, let's establish what step tracking is and why you might count your steps in the first place. Essentially, step tracking is simply quantifying the total number of steps you perform per day. This encompasses all movements that include walking, jogging and running. So this includes everything from walking to complete daily tasks to intentional running as a form of cardio. So how do you track your steps? Well, typically some sort of pedometer is used. Most commonly these days, smartwatches, fitness bands or even mobile phones can track your steps while they are being worn. These aren't always 100% accurate, but they usually do a good enough job to get a rough idea of your total daily step count. So why would you want to track your steps in the first place? Well, step tracking is an easy and practical way to quantify your total daily activity levels. This is because it accounts for all activities that involve walking or running, not just intentional exercise sessions. This is beneficial as dedicated exercise only accounts for a small proportion of the entire day and even less so for the entire week. So even if you perform regular exercise sessions, it doesn't always mean that your overall activity levels are high as a proportion of the entire day. So tracking our total daily step count is likely a more accurate way to quantify total daily physical activity levels. Before we discuss how many steps per day is appropriate for each person, let's first go through a general reference guide as to what is considered a low, moderate and high number of steps per day. A low daily step count can be considered as anything less than 5,000 steps. A moderate step count is between 5 to 10,000 steps. A high step count is around 10 to 15,000 steps. And a very high step count is 15,000 steps or more. The first discussion related to step counts is for the purposes of weight loss and weight management. So what we want to know is, how many daily steps should we accumulate to promote weight loss? Well, there isn't an exact answer to this question and it probably changes depending on context. Essentially, weight loss comes down to energy balance, how many calories we intake versus how many we expend. Our diet makes up the entire energy intake side of the equation. Although the energy expenditure side of things is multifactorial, with exercise being one component. So the logical assumption here would be that if we perform more steps per day, we can increase the amount of energy we expend and promote a lower calorie balance, causing us to lose weight or maintain a lower body weight. But is this what happens in reality? To answer this, we first need to understand how we expend energy in the first place. Total daily energy expenditure is made up of three primary components. The largest contributor to this is our basal metabolic rate. This accounts for somewhere around 60 to 75% of total daily energy expenditure. Our metabolic rate basically includes all essential functions required to survive, including breathing, circulating blood, digesting food, absorbing nutrients, and so on. The next component is what is known as the thermic effect of feeding. This has been thought to account for around 10% of total daily energy expenditure. This refers to the temporary increase in metabolic rate we experience to consume, digest and metabolize food. And the other component is movement and exercise, which is thought to contribute somewhere around 15-30% to of energy expenditure depending on physical activity levels. This includes all forms of movement and exercise, including the number of steps we accumulate. Although it also includes other subconscious movements and also dedicated sport or exercise that you might perform. So this is where our steps can have the ability to influence energy expenditure. Furthermore, there is also energy compensation that we need to account for too. As we perform more exercise, we tend to see decreases in other components of energy expenditure, meaning the total daily amount of energy we expend is probably not as much as we think. This research review analyzed energy expenditure data from around 1,800 adults. The researchers found that on average, energy compensation experienced from exercise is around 28%. This means that only around 72% of the calories we burn from movement and exercise actually contribute to total daily energy expenditure. For example, if we were to burn 150 additional calories in an exercise session and all other factors of our day remained equal, there would be about a 28% compensation, which equates to 42 calories. So this exercise session would only contribute a net 108 calories to total daily energy expenditure, not 150. 
And while it isn't entirely clear where this compensation comes from, it is thought to be some combination of a reduced basal metabolic rate, reduced subconscious movements, and possibly even becoming more efficient with movement and exercise. Furthermore, it seems that the amount of compensation we experience increases with higher levels of activity. This research review aimed to assess how physical activity influences total daily energy expenditure. The authors suggested that total daily energy expenditure follows a constrained model. In other words, as we expend more energy via movement and exercise, we see more compensation from other components as a strategy to conserve energy. While we usually see physical activity as a way to expend energy, it also has an influence on our energy intake via appetite regulation. This research review aimed to assess how exercise influences our food intake. They propose this relationship between energy intake and energy expenditure. Essentially, low levels of physical activity resulted in a dysregulated appetite where people tend to eat more calories than they expend. It is not until we achieve moderate to high levels of physical activity that our appetite becomes regulated in line with our energy needs. In other words, we eat more in line with how much energy we burn. This suggests that increasing our step count to an extent is probably helpful to eat in accordance with our energy expenditure. However, this theory would suggest that more exercise beyond a certain point may just result in us eating more to compensate for the increased energy expenditure, which wouldn't further promote a negative energy balance. So while doing more exercise doesn't seem to have a direct one-to-one -one relationship with energy expenditure, does increasing our step count assist with weight loss in the real world? This was explored in this study, which aimed to assess the association between step counts and body weight change. Around 27,000 people who owned a Withings activity tracker, which is just a brand of fitness devices, had their activity levels measured over a six-month period and were sorted into the following categories. Sedentary, which were those who accumulated less than 5,000 steps per day on average. Low activity, meaning 5 to 7,500 steps per day. Moderately active, meaning 7,500 to 10,000 steps. And highly active, defined as greater than 10,000 steps on average. These groups were then compared with changes in various different health metrics after six months. It was found that all groups lost weight with higher activity levels resulting in slightly greater weight loss. So, a high step count doesn't seem to be essential for weight loss, but it does seem to help to some extent. However, we should always keep in mind that your diet is probably going to have a more meaningful impact on the energy balance equation compared with exercise. It will be very difficult to compensate for a poor diet by increasing exercise levels. As a general guide, you would probably want to accumulate at least a moderate activity level to assist with weight loss, so around 5 to 10,000 steps per day. And ideally, high activity levels will likely be further beneficial, but it isn't essential. And a very high activity level might have a small additional benefit too, but it is probably not worth the additional time and effort required unless it is part of your habitual day, such as having a highly active job, for example. The next factor to consider is how step counts influence cardiorespiratory fitness. This is a fairly vague term, but it is most commonly measured as VO2 max, or the maximum amount of oxygen that can be utilized during exercise. So what we want to know is how does our step count influence cardiorespiratory fitness? This was explored in this study, which aimed to assess the association between step counts and various different fitness measures. 70 men and women between 21 to 49 years wore a pedometer for four days while going about their regular daily activities. Total steps per day were recorded, as well as aerobic steps, which was defined as performing 60 or more steps per minute for more than one minute, which is an indicator of higher intensity exercise. At the end of the study, subjects were grouped into three categories. Low steps, meaning less than 5,000 steps per day. High steps, meaning 5,000 or more per day. Or high steps plus aerobic steps, meaning performing at least 5,000 steps plus accumulating some aerobic steps. It was found that both the low and high step count groups had similar VO2 max scores, but the high steps plus aerobic steps had a greater VO2 max than the others. So in terms of cardiorespiratory fitness, accumulating more steps per day might have a slight benefit. However, it seems that the intensity of exercise is more important for cardiorespiratory fitness than the total number of steps. 
As a practical guide, you would probably want to accumulate at least a moderate number of steps per day for decent cardiorespiratory fitness, but making sure that some of this exercise is of a relatively high intensity. And lastly, let's discuss how step counts influence health and longevity. This is an enormous topic and there are many subcategories we could delve into. However, as an overview, let's look at this meta-analysis which aimed to assess the relationship between step counts and all-cause mortality, in other words, your risk of dying from any causes. From a total of over 130,000 participants, the analysis found that a higher daily step count was associated with a lower risk of death, up to and beyond 20,000 steps. However, this relationship was non-linear, meaning higher step counts seemed to have less additional benefit. Significant diminishing returns started to exist after reaching around 7,000 steps per day. For some more specific health markers, this study looked at the associations between habitual step count and various risk factors for cardiovascular disease in around 4,700 middle-aged adults. And a similar trend was observed between all four markers measured. Lower glycated hemoglobin, C-reactive protein, and triglycerides were all associated with higher step counts, while higher HDL cholesterol was associated with higher step counts, all of which are thought to reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease. A stronger association was observed up to around 10,000 steps, with less additional benefit of higher step counts beyond this point. So it seems that higher step counts are beneficial for overall health, even up to very high levels. However, the majority of health benefits might be achieved by reaching a moderate step count for overall health and longevity, which would be around 5 to 10,000 steps per day. And for further health benefits, achieving a high and even very high step count is probably going to be helpful. With all this information, let's now establish some practical recommendations. Total daily step count is probably the best practical indicator of physical activity. This is because it accounts for all forms of movement that involve walking, jogging, or running. So it includes intentional cardio, running-based sports, as well as unintentional activity too. For the purposes of weight loss and weight management, diet is the most important consideration. Increasing step counts seem to further assist with this, but it shouldn't be the primary method of inducing a calorie deficit. Achieving a moderate step count, around 5 to 10,000 steps per day, is going to be helpful to regulate appetite and expend a little more energy. Going above 10,000 steps will likely have additional benefits for weight management, and it is a good idea to try and achieve this if it is feasible. Once we start going beyond 15,000 steps, the additional benefits are probably minimal, so it might not be worth the time and effort it takes to complete, unless it is part of your habitual routine. For cardiorespiratory fitness, higher step counts don't seem to have all that much of a benefit. It is the intensity of exercise that is going to have a bigger influence than your total step count. So for cardiorespiratory fitness, high intensity exercise like running, cycling or sport are going to be most beneficial. And for overall health and longevity, higher step counts up to and beyond 20,000 steps appear to be beneficial. Although the majority of health benefits seem to be achieved by getting to a moderate step count, around 5 to 10,000 per day. Then there seems to be diminishing returns where more and more steps are beneficial but have less additional benefit. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Check out flowhighperformance.com for online coaching, training templates, ebooks and more.